We watch our movies in 3D now. We're hearing about 3D television coming down the pipe. Now, how about 3D printing? Well, our biz doc, Nick Bontis, is back to talk about that this week. And I, I'm sorry, Nick, I can't get my head around this one. Well, it's a very simple concept. If you can just imagine a three-dimensional object, let's just say a wooden duck. Now, how would you take a scan? You would take a digital photo of the duck in 2D, and it would come out on the laser printer on a piece of paper in 2D. For the three-dimensional printer, what it does is imagine like a CT scan. It actually takes a digital photo of every layer of the wooden duck. And then what happens is you feed into the three-dimensional printer wood or a block of wood, and it will actually reproduce that wooden duck perfectly like a clone exactly it's almost like an automatic lathe of that original duck so the way these three-dimensional printers work is you input exactly the material that you want whether it's plastic or food or wood and it actually reproduces a perfect image of that object that it's being copying so it's quite amazing technology now i'm almost afraid to ask <laughs> but what are some of the applications for well this? there's some amazing applications the first one is in forensic dentistry so you can imagine taking teeth Right? And then having that dental material on the input and then actually recreating that tooth from the space when you're trying to look at you know, forensics from, from dental implants, let's say. Um, there's also applications with regards to the reconstruction of ancient bones. For example, when you're doing archaeology or you're looking at dinosaurs or perhaps you're developing new bones or orthopedic structures for individuals. So quite amazing from that regard. The most common actual applications that I've seen recently now that actually work pretty good are jewelry. So you can imagine diamond rings diamonds? or well, bracelets. Well, would they still be diamonds? Yeah. Well, there are diamonds because uh. if you have a perfectly cut diamond, and, you know, sometimes they say it's more art than science to perfectly mm -hmm. cut a diamond, yes. and then you have the block of carbon, you could actually have the 3D printer reproduce that perfect well, cut. Well, talk about implications. Saw. I don't think the diamond mine industry would be no, too thrilled they with wouldn't. this. The other one. But the cost of diamonds, yeah. too. Ooh. Well, there's a lot of applications, too, that I think are useful. For example, mm -hmm. food. You can imagine, now I don't I have a lot of chefs, including my father-in-law, and he wants to keep his job, but you can imagine a muffin and having a 3D version of that muffin. So you would actually put in the materials, all the ingredients of the muffin, and actually have the 3D printer could recreate the muffin. That's so, a amazing dream come true for me, Nick yeah. Bontis, I'll tell yeah. you. But what about the dangers, though? Okay. I mean, so the dangers, of course, yeah, head. theft, yeah. obviously a danger, you know, the stealing of intellectual property or design. Mm -hmm. How about counterfeit? Remember when first color laser printers came out? The counterfeiters were worried because they could reproduce cash, you know, dollar bills. Mm -hmm. And now our color laser printers are so amazing that you could actually reproduce a pretty good dollar bill. Well, now imagine being able to do that in the three-dimensional space, actually reproducing fine art or reproducing a statue perfectly as if the artist had created it themselves. So we're still a long way away. You know, it sounds a little bit Star Trekish to believe that I would three-dimensionally recreate Connie I don't want well, to talk that's about the that. Next question, yeah, isn't I, I'd it? rather keep the original. Thank but you the for cool that. thing is that the technology is here and now. The military and government in the U.S. are actually working with it. And I think we're actually going to be seeing it soon, even in our homes, maybe in 10, 15 years. Wow, that really is the stuff of science fiction, isn't it, Nick? Okay, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Connie. Thanks, Nick.